today we're going to learn five techniques to improve your slide guitar playing. Technique number one is to really get comfortable down here in the open E position. So what I mean by that is just using our open strings. It's kind of like playing blues boogie woogie style like John Lee Hooker or something, but we want to get good at doing that with a slide. So let me just demonstrate for a little bit, okay? So to me, getting a hold of this playing, not much going on at first, but clarity of notes, right? We're just making like one or two notes pop out. We can do double stops. What we're not doing is we're not doing this. Like we really wanna make sure that just one note at a time is popping up if we're trying to play something like this. So what I was doing is I was just kind of laying my thumb over all the strings that I was muting, right? Because that was just my one-stop shop way of muting everything that I'm not playing. And also, if this is all brand new to you, be sure to check out my Sly Guitar Masterclass where I go over some of these things in greater detail. Technique number two is to get a slide lick really under your belt. In this case, I'm gonna use what I think of as kind of like the classic Albert King lick. And I'm gonna show you how to play it in a couple of different places so that we get used to the tuning and just how this sort of lick feels on slide guitar. So what do I mean by the Albert King lick? I mean this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to now play this up at the 12th fret. This is a little more like in position if we're thinking about lines that are more position based, okay? So this is starting on the fourth string root at the 12th fret. Same exact lick, but different place to play it. So that's a little bit different up at the 12th fret because we're traveling over three strings now to play this lick. So it's counting on us being able to mute, just really have control over which string we're playing. It's not necessarily better at the 12th or the 5th fret. And in fact, I think it's just super important to be able to do both of them. But the thing that is different about the 5th fret, down closer to the nut, is that we do have to travel further on the E string if we're gonna play those different notes which isn't necessarily a problem. It just gives us more info that we have to be very specific about. So once more, let me try this for you. Okay, there's a lot of really cool stuff we can do by unbending a note, right? If we're sort of releasing a bent note, with the slide, we're not bending a note with the slide, but we're, we're emulating that sort of note bend, right? We can really get into the details like this. For that sort of climbing the stairs lick that Albert loves to do. That sort of thing is great for slide. You can really dig in. I'm making sure, like I said, my thumb's just across every other string so I can wail on that first string and climb that ladder and get from my root to the fifth. The third technique is to make sure that you can play your major and minor pentatonic scales across each string. So I would just start in E major and start playing across on the E string. 
Um, the best way to do this, just start on the high E string and just play the major scale from top to bottom. That's the major scale. A lot of the time in blues music and rock and pop, we're kind of thinking major pentatonic, which is basically the same thing, but we're omitting the fourth degree and the seventh degree in that case, okay? That's a small difference as far as practicing and getting the lay of the land is concerned. Practicing both is super important, okay? But once you get comfortable with say major, And then minor, there are a couple different minors right there. I went with Aeolian, right? Now we can do things like you can do little scalar exercises where you don't just go up, but I'm going to go up, root, second, third, and then I'm going to go down to the second. I'm going to go two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six. It's sort of like a scale-wise uh, pattern. It sounds nice, and it's a great way to practice your intonation. Just make sure you're playing all the right notes. That's the major version. Here's the minor version. You can see I'm adding a little bit of vibrato as we would if we were playing naturally. And that sort of thing, that's just kind of an exercise when I'm sitting right here. It becomes music pretty quickly with details like vibrato, okay? So try that across all the strings. And the good news is that it's pretty doable in something like the key of E. The kind of tougher news is that we definitely want to be able to do this in all keys, okay? So just slow it down. Start in one key. Um, if you're tuned to E, do it in E. You know, if you're in open D, just use open D. Whichever one you're in, just start there. I guarantee that if you spend enough time working on it in one key, you're working on it in other keys at the same time. It might take some more specific focus practice in those other keys later, but just getting it down in one key is the start, okay? So start there and it, you will grow from there, I guarantee it. Okay, the fourth technique is to add your own flair to your slide guitar playing. How can you do that? There are a number of different ways. One thing that I like to do the most myself, I'll bring up my own because I do it, is I use a volume pedal when I'm playing. So that allows me to, instead of just having this, you know, just what you see is what you get, I can ease into notes and really make it lyrical when I'm playing a line. So here's what a volume pedal does for me. So to me, and just working on my voice on the slide guitar. That helps articulate all of the things that I'm trying to say. That was just a little example of how I use it sometimes. You can go way up high, and sometimes I'll bring it down really quietly if I'm playing with my band. We'll play a blues, or you know, if we're just playing a ballad or something and I'm soloing. I love to bring the dynamic way down. Like Buddy Guy said, so funky you can smell it. And I'm not kidding, you, so quietly that you can hear a pin drop in the room. When you bring it down like that, and you can play super dynamically with your volume pedal, the crowd just responds and it makes it more interesting. You know, the dynamic range of this instrument and what you can say with it is just a huge part of your identity. So for me, volume pedal is a trick that I really like to lean on for slide guitar. Another couple of things that we can do is you can add things like you can play behind the fret, right? So in this case, what that would mean is instead of just playing a lick like this, instead of fretting your slide back at the 10th fret, we could put our index finger there and go like this. So 
So you can see, I just fretted underneath the slide. When you push down on a note and you fret it physically with your finger, it just goes beneath the slide so we can actually hear it. This also allows us to play chord voicings like this. This is a dominant seven voicing up at the 12th fret. So fretting behind the slide is super useful. Something that Derek Trucks does, he plays this all the time. As soon as Derek plays a lick like this, you know it's Derek. So this is a specific note choice that he does. He goes like this, he plays the root and then he'll go down to the six. Here's a little bit more context, but listen for this when you're listening to Derek, he's doing it all the time. It's really tasty. It's kind of like BB King playing one note and you go, ah, BB King. Okay, sounds a little bit like Derek, right? It's that gospel soul sort of influence that all it takes is that one phrase and boom, sounds like Derek, sounds like something we're used to hearing him do. He does it with such conviction and control that that's part of his sound. My fifth technique and quite possibly the very most important of them all is to really get comfortable transcribing other instrumentalists, specifically vocalists, um, I think that vocalists have so much to give us as slide guitar players. We're really emulating that with the slide. So to demonstrate some of this, I'm gonna break down the intro of A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke. This is definitely one of the most famous vocal intros of all time. And it's very simple, but it's really great to practice this to get that sort of phrasing under our belts with our slide. So this is in the key of B flat. So we're at the sixth fret and we're just going to play on the B string for this, okay? So it sounds like this. So you don't have to pick all of these notes. I'd recommend you just kind of experiment with how to get between the sixth and the 11th fret. I'm definitely using the volume pedal like I just said, I'm gonna kind of Make sure the note pops out the very most at the 11th fret. Once again, a little slower. We're gonna go from six to eight and then up to 11. And that's where you sort of let it soar, right? A little vibrato at 11 with your volume pedal pushed down all the way if you're using one. That's the moment that we're waiting for, right? Okay, that's as far as I'm going with that because I really want you to get focused on the details. Try that for five minutes straight. Then try to transcribe the next part of the melody. But just work on that intro first, okay? That sort of attention to detail is what's going to bring your whole slide guitar skill set up. So listen, focus on how you sound, focus on other details of other players playing that you really want to get in yours. And with some of this focused attention on your own playing, I guarantee you're gonna come really far. And we'll be learning your licks before long. Those are my five most important techniques to get down if you're serious about slide guitar. Hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. We've got videos like this coming out all the time. Catch you next time.